tragic Demons appear like magic Money long so elastic Foreign fabrics to fashion I'm itching for money cash I had it Shit get on my pockets like time When I get on my beat it's jurassic Little niggas don't want static Wait, 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 wait Become like tsunami and drown you with the drip What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. We are legit only two games into the Pistons season and we are already having like a war happening within Pistons Twitter, within the Pistons community. Legit only two games in and we're already dealing with this. And I think the worst part about it is that there's like a disconnect on all sides. Like we have some people that are screaming for more minutes for Isaiah Stewart or Sadiq Bey or Killian Hayes. Then we have some people who are saying it's only game two, you gotta wait. And then we have some people saying, well yeah, we understand that, but this, that, blah, blah, blah. So there's like, there's people all over the place on different sides of the spectrum room for the Pistons right now and I think there's like a big disconnect between both sides so the point of this video is going to be for me to state where I stand with all of this because apparently after two games like I said we're already dealing with a war in the Pistons community and everyone has to take a stand so I just want everyone to know where I stand what I'm thinking about this team after two games and quite honestly actually I'm just going to really focus on game two here because game two I tweeted yesterday, I just have so many questions about what the hell happened yesterday and what exactly is going on. So, for example, there's a lot of people, mainly the Pistons beat writers and the people who agree with them so far, that are preaching that it's only game two. And I would agree with that sentiment about almost anything. Like, if it's just about, oh, the rookies aren't playing enough, or, oh, um, the team isn't playing extremely well yet, or, oh, this is going wrong, but like, stuff like that, then, okay, I would agree with that. Like, that would be obvious. It's only game two. And then, those same people are also saying that Pistons fans would not be able to stomach an actual rebuild that they're saying they want. And I also agree with that statement as well. I don't think people really could sustain and really handle the rebuild that people think they really want. I, I agree with that. However, I think these people are really generalizing and strawmanning a lot of people within the business community because there's lots more layers within those two statements and just like throwing them into that little general area is honestly not really fair at all. So like first off, this whole it's only game two statement, like I said, I would agree with it most times. But there's plenty of things that have happened already, specifically in Game 2, that are not the simple things that you say, oh, it's only Game 2. For example, such as the fact that we are going on year number 3 of the Pistons being completely incapable of going against a zone defense. This is not just Game 2. This is ever since Dwayne Casey was hired, they have been completely inept against zone defenses. Like, they completely sh shrivel down. It's impossible to score against, apparently. Like, this is not just a Game 2 thing. This is going on 3 years of the Detroit Pistons under Dwayne Casey being incapable of scoring against his own defense. How about the fact that Seiku apparently got knocked out of the game due to a hit to the head and was out the remainder of the game all the way until Mason Plumlee fouled out and then out of nowhere Seiku comes into the game for like, what was it, like 45 seconds and then we never saw him again. So like, which one was it? Was he knocked out of the game due to like a hit to the head? In that case, there's no way in living hell he should have never saw the floor again. He should he should just be on the bench the entire rest of the game. Or did you put him back in the doghouse because he was messing up in the first half? Which also would bring some criticism that you're putting young players in the doghouse for a rebuilding team. So what, what else do we got? What do we... Oh, yeah. Blake Griffin played 44 minutes yesterday. Game high, 44 minutes. Also, game high amongst any NBA player last night. Blake Griffin played 44 minutes yesterday. These people are trying to say that the Pistons are trying to showcase that Blake is healthy by playing 44 minutes. That he played really well yesterday. By the way, which is a completely false statement. He played really well in the first half. And if you cut his minutes down to maybe 30, maybe he has a really great game. But you kept him out there for an extra 14 minutes. I believe he played like the last like 16 minutes of the game. If you count overtime and end of regulation. And all he did out there was walk around. He didn't do anything. All you're showcasing the teams that he has a certain minute amount that he has to play. And if he exceeds that, he's not going to be able to do much on either end he's just gonna walk around and the longer he played during that game the more you saw that literally he's incapable of getting to the rim right now maybe that changes I really hope it does I love Blake but all you showed is that he's incapable of getting to the rim he's incapable of beating people off the dribble anymore he can't really finish around the rim right now all he's doing is shooting threes he shot like what was it like 12 of his 16 attempts from three and he happened to make what was it eight of them but that's not showcasing like people who think that that showcased the teams oh yeah we want Blake no all you did yesterday as you kept him out there longer was show teams why they should stay the hell away from Blake. I promise you anybody with eyes, any NBA scout did not watch that game yesterday and say, oh look, Blake hit 44 minutes in the box score. Let's go get him. His value must go up. I promise you that anybody with eyes who watched that game as an NBA scout saw that game and said, Blake can't play over a certain amount of minutes.
defense. He's really struggling on defense. He can't really beat anybody off the dribble anymore. He's only shooting threes because he can't do that. And when he does get to the rim, he lacks explosion now to finish over people or through people. He did not raise his value yesterday. The longer you kept Blake out there after his certain minute told that he should have played, the worse and worse he looked and the worse and worse his value got. And guess what? If you simply don't play a 31-year-old Blake Griffin 44 minutes, if you cut his minutes off at 30, he would have had a nice game. Those little deficiencies wouldn't have been so glaring. But the more you kept him out there, it was just a, it was so glaring that Blake couldn't beat people off the dribble. It was so glaring that he's so bad on defense. It was so glaring that once he plays a certain amount of time on the floor, he simply cannot move. So why are you trying to showcase his deficiency so much? And now we get to the Killian and Derrick Rose situation. And listen, I am a fair person. I'm not one of those people who are sitting here saying Killian needs to play more, play him 40 minutes, blah, 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 blah. I'm not saying that. I was completely in favor of pulling Killian in the first game when he made those mistakes. If Killian is making multiple mistakes in a row, he should be pulled. He needs to sit down and he needs to learn. That's fine. That's the right way to do things. The wrong way to do things is after Killian makes a mistake or two to pull him off the bench and pull him off the floor rather make him sit on the bench and tell him well learn on the court you have to sit back and learn and see how you need to do things next which is fine but when the person you're replacing him with has made back to back to back to back to back to back to back mistakes he's not learning anything but bad habits and all you're doing is showing them that hey if you make a few mistakes you're sitting in this doghouse but if Derrick Rose makes about two or five mistakes in a row he's gonna stay on the court because he's Derrick Rose I do not care whether it's game one whether it's game two or game 70 Troy Weaver made the moves he did in the offseason to set a culture, to set a foundation with this team for a team that hadn't had it for 12 years. Something I have completely supported and why I've loved his moves. Which means from day one, not day 70, not in February, from day one, you need to set the tone and you need to set that culture from day one. And what Dwayne Casey did yesterday in game number two was show Killian Hayes, if you make a few mistakes, I'm pulling you and you're putting in the doghouse. Whatever happened with Seku, whether he's concussed and you threw him back out there where he was concussed or you just sat him in the doghouse because he was wasn't playing well in the first half, whichever one. You're throwing your young guys in a doghouse and then letting the guys in front of them, like Derrick Rose, who made back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back mistakes, played absolutely horrific basketball for over two quarters while you sat them on the bench. It shows them nothing but bad habits, and it does the exact opposite of what Tory Reaver was trying to do by setting a culture. All you're doing is reaffirming the bad culture that's been here for 12 years. And that, ladies and gentlemen, cannot be just chucked up to it being Game 2. This is not, this player was a trash signing. That's it's just Game 2. This is not just Oh, this team sucks. It's never going to get any better. That's just game two. Oh, these rotations are trash. No, that's just game two. Everything I listed are either one previous years of issues or two things that need to be set from freaking day one that you cannot just get a pass from because it's game two. That's not how it works. And these things may get better over the season. It may not be an issue in a few weeks, but that does not mean just because it's game two, you get absolved of all criticism. You don't get criticized. You get to just be praised. We just get to ignore all the things you're doing wrong. That's just, uh, how does that make sense? sense. Just because it's game two doesn't mean you get praised and we just ignore all criticism. If you do something wrong in game one, just like if you do something wrong in game 65, I'm going to criticize you. And this video is running pretty long, so I'm going to end it right there. That's all I've got for you guys today. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys have thought about the Pistons through two games. I know you guys are probably hyped up and have a lot to say about game two, so let me know all that down in the comment section down below. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for me. And until my next video, I'll see you guys later. Go Pistons. Peace out, everybody.